We're speaking with attorney Bob Ferber. Bob, if no kill is defined by some shelters by not killing animals that have treatable medical or behavioral issues, that too can be so subjective. And who determines what are treatable medical and behavioral issues? Because unless an animal got hit by a car and is so badly injured, or an animal is suffering terribly from cancer, and the right thing to do is euthanize the animal, and actually that's the very definition of euthanasia, is putting an animal out of its misery when he's suffering. But with the exception of only a handful of instances, one can argue that there are no behavioral or medical issues that cannot be treated. We just talked, Lori, about how behavior is uh, one of the factors that makes an animal adoptable or not adoptable, and that shelter workers tend to be the ones that determine if a dog or a cat that comes in the shelter, if their behavior is acceptable or if it's unwanted, can it be fixed? The other factor that plays into whether a shelter is going to kill an animal and is a medical condition. Is it a, a medical condition that can't be treated? And the reality is just about every medical condition, with the exception of some advanced cancer, uh, some you know cardiac problems or others, that most medical conditions that animals have when they come into a shelter can be treated, either with short-term treatment or long-term medication or surgery. Unlike behavior issues, which are judged by the local shelter worker, interestingly, what treatment an animal will get or not get for medical problems is usually determined by the policy of the shelter itself, of the shelter manager. And where does their policy come from? It's how much money the elected officials have given them to provide medical care. Most people would be shocked to find that the overwhelming majority of shelters around the country don't have a veterinarian on staff. They're lucky to even have a veterinary technician on staff. Most shelters don't have an x-ray machine. Most shelters are inequipped to even do a common knee surgery or even dental, an animal that has gum disease and needs dental work, which can be very dangerous if not treated. Shelters are ill-equipped. But in this case, I don't think we can put the blame or place the responsibility on the local shelter worker. It's the responsibility of the manager or the one who runs the shelter, and they're beholden to the elected officials who create their budget. And so it's a money issue. Elected officials don't think it's worth the money to fix all these problems that you and I and most of your listeners would say, wait a minute, that's fixable. That's outrageous. Right. You're going to kill a dog for a broken leg. You're going to kill a dog because it has an infection and needs a minor surgery or a st- or it has a bad eye and it, it needs the eye to be removed. That's what plays into what's adoptable. Bob, when we adopted one of our cats, Margarita, she had a terrible upper respiratory tract infection, which Peter and I easily treated with a short course of antibiotics. And she was fine. I know a lot of shelters that would have killed her, euthanized her, killed her because of the upper respiratory infection, because they would have said she's untreatable and thus unadoptable. And... Take it one step further, and then they're going to say later on, but we're no kill. Right. Lori, I'm glad you mentioned about the upper respiratory infection with your cat, because in my experience in Los Angeles, which is over 40 years, I personally saw hundreds of examples and became aware of thousands of examples of shelter cats that came in with minor upper respiratory infections, which is basically a head cold. Uh, or a chest cold, and they were put to sleep immediately Mm. without any effort to treat it. Mm. And they said, and they labeled that cat as unadoptable because of a minor cold. And that's that's what your listeners and all of us need to be aware of, is that behind that term, no kill, no matter who it is, what agency, what entity, shelter, anywhere in the country, the term means nothing unless you understand the internal policies of what do you, what are your standards at this shelter, meaning you, meaning the shelter workers, what are their standards? How much care will they give? How much time and patience and training will they give for behavior issues? How much money and resources will they devote to fix or correct medical problems? And that's what determines 
the quality of care and whether the shelter is doing what we want. Because when people want no kill, I think most people would agree, we want you to do what I would do it with my pet. We want you to spend as much money or even more because you're the government. You should have the money for this so that these animals can have a home. And sadly, that's just not the case. So when we hear no kill, you know, I, I'm rather cynical about it. It's a good marketing ploy. It doesn't mean that people are being evil or trying to purposely, intentionally deceive the public, but it's a very misleading term. And I think that uh, it's important for listeners to know in their own community, when a sh their shelter says we're no-kill, talk to the people there and find out what do you mean by no-kill. When an animal comes in with behavior issues, how bad does it have to be that you're going to kill that dog or a cat? And with the medical conditions, what medical conditions do you not treat? And then you can define whether they are no-kill, low-kill, or whatever.